So today we're going to take a look at the Universal Audio Auto-Tune Real-Time Advanced Tool. A uh, couple of bits of background before we get too crazy with things. Number one, right here, it says Antares. Antares is the company that actually created Auto-Tune back in 1997. I was lucky enough to get my hands on it somewhere back then, did a review for a magazine, and I can tell you that this version is so much better. It is simpler, it's faster, it sounds better. If you, for some reason, really love the old sound, you can always just hit the classic button and you get the classic sound. Notice that this flex tune knob goes away when you have classic mode engaged. So let's just go through it real simply. The long and short of this is that this is a tool that's designed to live real time. You put it on a vocal, you set the settings how you like it, you let it fly, and you move on. Now, I have three different songs to check out. Uh, we're going to do this video in three different parts so you can hear the differences between uh, what I'll consider to be simple maneuvers, not so simple maneuvers, and then fairly detailed music theory-based maneuvers. All right, so let's just get started. Obviously, I'm using Logic. You can use anything. As long as you have Universal Audio hardware and the plugin, you're good to go. Um, here in Logic, I have created different alternatives. I'm actually going to start here with the Ghostwriters alternative uh, because I think that this song represents kind of the simplest way to deal with auto-tune. I'll give you a quick listening sample, and we can go from here. So let me just make sure the plugins are off. This is just the natural vocal. So this is the track, in it's, in it's kind of a short version. We're only dealing with the verse right now. You have the sun, moon, and stars for me you dim the light so I couldn't see Well, baby, tuck your heart under your bed If I were you, I'd be prepared So one of the first things I want to point out is that if your ear isn't even really tuned to the fact that she's not really on pitch, um, any tool that has a tuner will show you what's going on. We're assuming here that A equals 440 hertz, and you can just watch what happens with the vocal. And I'll just mute the track so you can just hear the vocal, and then you can watch the needle and see how, quote, off her pitch really is. You have the sun, moon, and stars for me. You dim the light so I couldn't see. Well, Baby, tuck your heart under your bed If I were you, I'd be prepared If I were looking at this and trying to figure out what key this song is, I would have a really, really tough time doing it. Luckily, we don't necessarily need that. But I am just showed you that to show you that the pitch is indeed a little bit off if you even know what notes she's singing. I believe she's in the key of C sharp minor. Now, here in Autotune, um, I'm actually just going to real quick uh, set this up so that the keyboard looks a little prettier. Okay. When you first launch Autotune Real Time Advanced, you get this view. Up here at the top, you have everything from little settings on the side. I'm going to turn tooltips off. Uh, a master detune, a master tracking. And then sort of what is the input material? Is it a soprano, a male, low or high? Is it an instrument? Yes, you can use auto-tune for instruments. This is a female vocalist. I'm going to leave it in soprano. You can, of course, choose your key. They give it to you in sharps. Could be flats. If you don't know the difference, <laughs> you're fine. Uh, keep it in chromatic and the keyboard stays active. Once you get specific and set, say, C-sharp minor, you can see the keyboard goes away. At this point, what it's saying is it doesn't really matter what the tracking is. I'm going to fix the notes to this particular key. Now, we'll get to that in a moment because there is a way to kind of get the best of both worlds. For right now, I'm just going to hit play, and I just want you to watch what's going on. In the middle here, it's going to tell you what note it's giving you. Up above on the outside, it's going to tell you what the correction is. So if the correction is up here, that means the note is flat and Auto-Tune is raising it. If the correction is over here, then the note is sharp and auto-tune is flattening it. One quick tidbit, if you stay in chromatic and the keyboard is active, this tells you what notes are coming in. 
So the keyboard tells you what notes are coming in. The blue display tells you what notes are going out. This is the vocal again. You have the sun, moon, and stars for me. You dim the light so I couldn't see. Well, baby, tuck your heart under your bed. If I were you, I'd be prepared. So as you can see, most of the notes are hanging out in D sharp, C sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and the occasional E. If you know theory, you know that C sharp minor. If you don't, again, you can leave it in chromatic and don't even think about it. Auto-tune will simply move notes coming in to the nearest pitch that it thinks makes sense. Now, auto-tune is on, and even though all my knobs are down or showing zero, except this one, it's actually already behaving. You can see a little bit of correction going on here. This is how easy it is to use Auto-Tune Real-Time Advanced. You pretty much need three knobs, and that's it. Occasionally, you'll use this fourth one. In order, retune speed is the most important. Um, right now, it's set to 400 at its lowest setting. It's taking 400 milliseconds to analyze the note and add correction. That's really slow. If I go all the way up to instant real-time, this is what it sounds like. You have the sun. Moon and stars for me You dim the light so I couldn't see Well, baby, tuck your heart under your bed If I were you, I'd be prepared So you might like that sound. Uh, I don't in this particular case. I think it's a little bubbly um, and it's it's overly accurate, and you can see the difference between the correction here you have the is minuscule, and the correction here you have is maxuscule. I know that's not a word. I'm just having fun. So with the retune speed, you want to set this first, I don't know, start at about 2 o'clock, um, or perhaps start at 10 o'clock and increase as you like. Uh, this is an electronic song. I think I want the vocals to be more tuned rather than less tuned. Um, as the music moves towards more organic music, maybe I don't want nearly as much of this. So the idea is you want to find how fast is auto-tune behaving that fits your vocalist. I'm going to start here at 2 o'clock. And then we're going to introduce some of the other knobs to for smoothness. You have the sun moon and stars for me so i can already tell that's going to be a pretty good setting for me i think i'm going to actually turn it up a little bit more um, because right here it's starting to feel kind of natural not perfectly natural but kind of natural and what i really want to do is push the boundaries so that i can show you what these other knobs are doing flex tune in particular so let's turn this up more like three o'clock here you have the sun moon and stars for me with flex tune, it adds a certain amount of organicness back into the equation. So right now, it's moving very quickly to retune notes to what it thinks is the correct scale. And with flex tune, it's basically saying, okay, well, within a certain percentage of error, leave it alone. And listen to how much smoother it is before, fairly aggressive, and then after, much smoother. Same speed. So here's before. You have the sun, moon, and stars for me. And then here's after. Again, I'll put it up to about 3 o'clock. You have the sun, moon, and stars for me. I mean, to be honest, that might be great. It's almost perfect. I would actually accept this. Um, I'm actually going to tune it faster and turn this down a little bit just to get a little bit more digital, robotic kind of sounds. You have the sun, moon, and stars for me. In fact, I'm actually going to go the opposite direction. I'm going to slow it down and loosen it up. You have the sun, moon, and stars for me. And I'm going to leave it alone. Humanize is a lot like FlexTune. This moves very quickly. And Humanize does the same thing in that it smooths out the vocal, particularly when a note is held for a very long period of time. Let's get this really aggressive and then let's leave the human eyes down and we'll introduce this slowly and you can see if it gets smoother. You have the sun, moon and stars for me. You dim the light so I couldn't see. So as you can see, when it's tuned really fast, 
humanize isn't really helping with the smoothness. Again, this is really meant for longer notes that are really held out at a very long fashion. Um, she's not really doing that so much. And when she holds it, she's shaking it with vibrato. So I don't think humanize is really going to do anything for us. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, go back here to the settings I kind of liked. And now with vibrato, particularly at the end of certain phrases, her voice shakes. With natural vibrato, as you turn it up, Autotune actually increases the amount of vibrato. So if there's none, you can add some here. Uh, conversely, if you bring it down, if there is vibrato, it tends to limit the range of the high note, low note as the note oscillates. So here's without. You have the sun, moon, and stars for me. Listen, particularly at the end of stars for me, there's like a little shaking. I'm going to turn this down and see if I can smooth that out. You have the sun, moon, and stars for me. You dim the light so I couldn't see. Well, baby, tuck your head under your bed. Uh, on bed? She rises at the end of that third stanza when she says, um, put your head under your bed. She kind of rises up. This is really smoothing out that transition. This might be an aggressive setting, so I think I'll back it off a little bit, but I do like what this is doing in this particular moment. Again, if your singer gives you a lot of vibrato, you can counteract it by moving this left. If your singer gives you not enough vibrato, you can counteract it by moving it to the right. Just so we can demonstrate it, let's increase the vibrato way too much and listen for what happens again at the end of the stanzas when she starts shaking her voice. You have the sun, moon, and stars for me. You dim the lights so... On, I, mean, I kind of went nuts on lights, you know, lights. So that might not be, the, it's not the effect that I want. But you can hear what it's doing is it, when it hears a little vibrato, it makes a lot of vibrato. And conversely, when it hears a lot of vibrato in this setting, it's going to make a little bit of vibrato. So I'm going to leave it on the negative side here, but much gentler. Frankly, we're done. Here's the whole thing. Now that I've tuned it in a way where I like it, I'll play it once. Um with the background track, and I'll play it once without, and then once with, and you should hear a really just well-tuned, very smooth vocal. Um, that's it. You're not. I'm not really going for the effect necessarily. If I were, I'm going to back this off and increase this. So you can get a little bit more of it, somewhere around there. Now it should be fairly smooth, a little digital bubbling before and after. Here's before. You have the sun. Moon and stars for me. You dim the light so I couldn't see. Well, baby, tuck your heart under your bed. If I were you, I'd be prepared. So, sounds fine. If you didn't know the difference, you'd be fine. If you do know the difference, Turn it on. You have the sun, moon, and stars for me. You dim the light so I couldn't see. Well, baby, tuck your heart under your bed. If I were you, I'd be prepared. It's better. Now, maybe it's subtly better but it's definitely better. And the fact that I have the speed up a little bit fast and the flex tune down just a hair adds just enough processing to remind my ear that this is an EDM kind of track. So that's it. How fast do you go? How smooth do you want it note by note? How smooth do you want it in the long passages? And is the vibrato working or not working? I'm going to pause here, pull up another song with a whole different mindset, and we're going to show you a little bit more of what's behind the scenes. If you're an aspiring music producer looking for that breakthrough moment to evolve your sound, check out our online mentorship network at pyramind.com.